morning folks it is quite early on a Sunday morning the day before Labor Day and my ass is sitting here desperately trying not to buy more shit um and then so I then I decided to come in here and start doing some makeup so I'm doing some makeup and I'm listening to some music and um I look over as I'm getting ready to do you know like my little bronzing and contouring and all that good stuff I look over and oh my gosh, I forgot that I had purchased um, this Phyto, Sicily Powers by the way, I forgot that I had purchased this Phyto Touche um, Poudre Eclat Soleil um, sun powder, basically, sun, sun glow powder. It's right here in English, I'm sorry. Um, so i have forgotten that I had purchased this. I purchased this the same time that I got the uh, Phyto, whatever it's called, foundation which I think is the last video that went up even though it was recorded over a month ago but it was so long and I just didn't want to be bothered with editing the video uh, because it took quite a few tries um, so that video is quite long but I have forgotten that I got this too um, and so I decided I'm gonna go ahead and use it today for the first time um, once again this is the Phyto uh, Sun Glow Powder from Phyto Paris, which is largely a skincare brand out of Paris, France. Um, but they do have quite a um, large... Yo, if you hear anything in the background, that's my mother. <sighs> the walls are thin. The walls are thin. Anywho, um, Phyto, Phyto Paris is a largely skincare brand out of Paris but they do have a very large um, color cosmetic component to the brand as well the brand um, also includes um, sorry the color cosmetics also tend to include skincare benefits um, in the in the cosmetics and um, but I think that's garbage but you know whatever anyway there are two of these sun glow powders there's also a sun glow gel as well a bronzing gel um, there are two of these sun glow powders there is peche doré which is golden peach Jesus peche doré yeah um, and then there's uh, miel canal which is uh, honey cinnamon um, which is the one that I got which is the darker shade um, this compact is a hundred and twenty dollars Let me read what it says. It says, uh, Phyto Touche Sun Glow Powder is a light, creamy powder that allows you to create a customized sun kiss glow. Its wave design features two golden beige shades to build your bronze effect, plus a blush shade to add freshness and radiance. Its imperceptible texture melts onto the skin like a cream for a smooth, even result with no powdery effect. Uh, Phyto Touche blends perfectly with the skin and stays in place for flawless, natural, and long-lasting makeup. The Golden Zebra Print Compact, is it golden? I don't think it was golden. Was it golden? Um, comes with a mini kabuki brush, uh, which I have uh, looked at. It's quite pretty. Um, it's one of the first brushes that comes in a compact that I may actually use because it's really nice. Um, yeah, that was it. Oh, I was trying to find how much you get, but it really doesn't say how much you get in the... It's probably on the box. Oh, look, it's on the box, Cleo. So you get uh, 0 0.38 ounces for $120. I don't know how much that translates to. Um, I don't know if that's standard or not. Uh, so this is the Kabuki brush. It's... This is a kabuki brush. It's very nice. It's very dense. Um, I just, it's, somebody's sneezing up a storm in it. Um, it's very dense. It looks like it would give a really good um, application, but I'm going to actually go ahead and use one of my BH brushes. I like this one because it's fluffy. It's not that dense, and it's also tapered at the point. So this is what the compact looks like oh it is golden zebra this is what the compact looks like on the outside once again this is Mio canal um, and this is what the inside of the package looks like you get a bronzer here 
um, uh, I guess a slightly lighter bronzer here or I guess you can use that for an under eye powder if you feel like it and then you get this rather cool toned pink which is the smallest part of the um, package the compact which you know it would have been nice if it was big -er. Uh let me give you some swatches of the powder this is the darkest shade I'm just let me put this I'm I went back to using my um, my old camera for filming because I, I don't know I just like I was looking at some of my old videos the other day and I liked the um, I like the resolution better even both even though both of them are recording in 4k I just like the way it looked on the um, the old camera better but the problem is the old camera has a wider angle uh, so I'm, just, I'm having to reorder everything here so it's you know it's just anyway so this is the darkest shade right here of the bronzer and then you have the you know slightly less dark shade um, and then the this is the blush right here um, I have not used phyto products before other than the foundation that I did the review for the other day but I do like I did like the foundation there's I didn't even know this was on there, but anyway, I did like the foundation, so I'm kind of um, looking forward to seeing what this looks like. The darkest bronzer does have a bit of a sheen to it, so this is what it looks like on the brush. I don't know if you guys can see it. Um, that's what it looks like right there. And I'm just going to go in. I'm going to use this because, like I said, I'm reordering everything, so I've kind of blocked my um, mirror, so I can't really see from that mirror right now so let me just go ahead and do this which is kind of bad because I do need perspective because of the way I see um, I my eyes don't focus very well so I kind of do need the larger mirror for perspective just to see what I'm doing um, and oh that's that's rather nice I wasn't really expecting this much color oh this is beautiful hello all right so I don't know if you guys can see it well ooh. So the funny thing about this is that it looks kind of red in the compact, but it's not actually very red. Once you put it on, it just becomes like a warm shade. But yeah, like I was saying, um, I'm kind of happy that I like this because I did wind up um, sending the La Mer one back because, you know, we, 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 we talked about the fact that it was owned by Estee Lauder and I don't support the Lauder brands, so... Oh wow, this is really nice. Can you guys see the difference? Alright, now we're going to try this here blush. It is a cool tone blush, even though it looks quite light, so I really am not anticipating having too much issue with it. Um, usually cool tone blushes, especially pink ones, no matter how light they look, they, they usually they tend to show up on me. Um, so... It would have been nice if this palette had a um, okay this is nice and buildable I like that it would have been nice if this palette had a highlighter as opposed to a uh, two bronzing powders because like I guess it makes sense though um, so like if one shade is too dark for you, you can mix the other one with it and uh, you know, I'm getting bronzer in there. That's why I don't really like these uh, triptych compacts. But, but yeah, like I was saying, um, it makes sense so that you can, number one, go from like summer to winter with this palette. Um, or if the, the, um, the darker shade is too dark for you, you can go ahead and uh, mix it with the lighter one and get your perfect shade. All right, so that's, that's kind of nice. Um, I don't like the way that fan brush is putting on the powder, but um, 
this brush is too big for the compact. And I keep getting bronzer in it, so the color keeps sharing out. But alright, I'm not mad. What do you guys think? I'm not mad. So this is one side of my face with the compact, and then this is the other side without. Can you guys see a difference? Tell me if you can or not. Alright guys, so here's my entire face using the Cicely Paris Phyto Touche uh, Touche Pure Eclat Soleil. Um, if I'm being honest, and I'm always honest, um, I do prefer the La Mer one. For one thing, the La Mer one, the powders weren't quite as powdery, which is weird because that was one of the selling points of this, you know, whole little blurb from Cicely that I read, that it wasn't a powdery look. Now, the bronzer powders are not powdery. They kind of just, like, sink into the skin. However, the blush is a little bit dry. I don't know if you could tell, like, it's a little bit powdery on my face. I did add some highlighter, which I wasn't planning on doing, um, but I, I did have to add a little bit of highlighter to make it not look quite so dry um, but it's not terrible it's it performed a lot better than I was expecting it to when I got I ordered it I was like mm, I don't know how this is gonna work then when I got it I was like oh this might work and using it on my face it is it's it's quite nice the powders are pretty buildable which tends to be the case with most luxury brands um, they start off at like zero and then you can build them up for the most part not all of them are like that but quite a few are like that Guerlain for instance is like that Chanel is like that um, but I like I said I never tried Sicily before so I don't know if all of their powders are like that but if this one is an indication they're pretty decent powders and quite buildable now how do I feel about this? I do like it. I really do like it. And I'm glad that I like it because, like I said, I sent, sent the La Mer one back. Um, so now I have this one if, you know, it's like an all-in-one palette. Like, you can travel with it. I just find the layout to be a bit awkward. I understand that they were going for, you know, like, artistry with this whole wave pattern. But to be honest with you, if it had been um, vertical rather than horizontal and if the blush had been slightly bigger it would have been great but as it is it's very um it's an awkward application process because you have to be very careful i was having some trouble in the beginning applying the blush because every time i put my fluffy blush brush into the blush portion i was getting um you know bronzer and then when i put it on it was sharing out into the bronzer so yeah it's just a little bit awkward uh the la mer one was not as awkward simply because it had no um it didn't have a blush component in it uh but yeah i kind of like it i actually do like it let me just stop saying kind of like it i really do like it um you know it gets the job done it's quite pretty if a little bit tacky um but you know it is what it is now is it worth a hundred and twenty dollars I'm going to go ahead and say no, um, and you guys know how I feel about it. It's so weird because your girl uses a lot of luxury makeup, and every time she talks about the price, she tells you that it's not worth it, but she still keeps going back and doing it, right? Okay, I know I don't make no sense. I really don't, and I'm sorry for that, but it's not worth $120. I'm pretty sure you could find something, you know, that performs equally as well or, you know, equally uh, for a fraction of the price, uh, but once again, with most luxury brands, you're really paying for the name. The only luxury brand that I've come across, honestly, that, uh, that a true luxury brand, and when I say luxury brand, I don't mean a brand that's calling itself a luxury brand. So, for instance, um, like Hourglass calls itself a luxury brand, right? Um, I don't consider Hourglass a luxury brand. It's a very high price brand, but I don't consider um, Hourglass uh, a luxury brand, call me elitist, call me a snob, but for me, luxury brands are Chanel, Guerlain, um, Gucci, uh, Balmain, uh, what else, uh, Dior, and, and if you notice what I'm doing here, the brands that I'm, I'm calling luxury brand Hermes are brands that have couture houses 
or perfume houses, all right? To me, that is a luxury brand. Just because you come out of nowhere and you have a bunch of really super high prices, you're not gonna convince me that you're a luxury brand because you haven't been here that long to call yourself a luxury brand. Um, so yeah, when I say luxury brands, I consider brands like the ones that I mentioned as luxury brands. Sisley Paris also is a luxury brand because Sisley's been around forever. Um, once again, Charlotte Tilbury, I don't consider Charlotte Tilbury a luxury brand. Um, she says she's a luxury brand. Okay, that's all right. Say what you want. That's not my belief. Now, what I was saying is most luxury brands, you are paying for the name, right? Which is the whole point. Um, the only luxury brand that I've come across that doesn't necessarily do that is uh, Chanel. Chanel's um, uh, products, their color complexion products, tend to be within the, I want to say, for 50, 40, 50 to 70 dollar range at most. Um, but everybody else, uh, even their foundations is like usually between like 50 and 60 bucks. Um, most other luxury brand foundations are like 90 dollars and better. Uh, Tom Ford also is a luxury brand because there's a Tom Ford house. So y y you get what I'm saying. Um, this is my concept of a luxury brand comes from literally years of working in the um, the fashion industry in New York, like on the magazine side. So that's what I classify as a luxury brand, which is really what a luxury brand is. But anyway, I digress. Is it worth the price point? If you're, um, if you relate it to the fact that it is a luxury house, um, it's a, it's a, not a luxury perfume house. It's not a couture house. It is a luxury skincare house. If you, um, related to the fact that it is a skincare house, a, lo a long-standing skincare house, then yes, the price makes sense. However, uh, nothing is ever, to me, is ever worth that. Like, like I said, you can probably find something that does the same thing or better um, without, you, for a fraction of the cost. Do I like it? Absolutely. Why do I like it? Because I'm probably a snob. Um, it is what it is. Let's just call a spade a spade. I've looked at my collection lately and I realized that I prefer luxury brands. It is what it is. There are a few uh, drugstore brands that I'll use like Makeup Revolution, but by and large, most of my shit is luxury shit. Um, it's not deliberate at all. It's just who I've always been, I suppose. Um, but yeah, is it worth 120 bucks? It depends on you, honestly. It depends on you. Um, if you feel like it's not worth 120 bucks, don't get it. Um, if you feel like it's worth 120 bucks, then do you. It is a very nice compact. It is a very, very nice compact. You won't go wrong getting it, that's for sure. And you can probably find it at, um, you can probably find it cheaper. Uh, you can probably find it cheaper on eBay or something. Um, I think perfumes.com, like any any one of those perfumes.com, fragrance net places that sell um, perfumes usually have the uh, cosmetic and skincare component of the brand that they're selling on the website also. So if you want it and you think it's too much, try one of those websites, get it there. All right, guys, I've actually been talking for way too long, um, but... I hope you enjoyed this uh, little demo of the Phyto Touche Poulet Eclat today. Um, and um, yeah, that's about it. I do like the powders. I think that it's it's yes and no for the price point, but you know, do you. As usual, guys, it's been real, it's been fun, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.